Okay, thank you very much, uh, Joaquin and Susana. I think that uh, uh, you are right. If you're looking at the, the, the map, map <laughs> you are in the right side and we are in the left side. You can say that you are in the other right, the other right. The other right, the other right. right. Well, um, Limari area, it's a very particular area. Um, it's an area located uh, more or less 500 kilometers north of Santiago, the capital of the country, and uh, where is located Maipo, a very well-known area to grow Cabernet Sauvignon and also vari varieties associated to this uh, variety, like Cabernet Franc or Petit Verdot. Um, I remember uh, the first time that I vinified a Chardonnay from this area, it was in 1996, so more than 25 years ago. We were very young back then. Absolutely, very, very I was just starting, and uh, but I, I I got a good a good teacher for Chardonnays and other varieties, and uh, we vinified a Chardonnay from this area for a crazy grower that plant Chardonnay, Cabernet, Merlot varieties and Sauvignon Blanc. You, you need to think that Limari region is an area where it's very well known to grow Pisco, our natural uh, spirit, right? That we are competing with the Peruvians. All, all, all the time we are competing with somebody. <laughs> yeah, with Argentina, with the Peruvians. That's Berubians. the Chile condition, yeah. You're, right. gonna, you're gonna survive to that. Right, the, the Peruvians said that the Pisco, they are the... the we discuss <laughs> that later, no worry. Okay. But, uh, but this area is very particular because um, we don't have, in, in the country we have the Andes Mountain that separate Chile and Argentina very clear. But also in the country we have the coastal range. And the coastal range stop the influence from the Pacific Ocean strongly. Uh, but in this area we don't have coastal range. The coastal range start just south of Limari. So uh, the vineyards, are located more or less 20 kilometers from the Pacific Ocean. You need to think that uh, the temperature of the water is pretty cold. We have penguins in this area. We don't have shark. We have penguins. So the temperature you of the water... You have to choose. You have to choose. Before yeah. getting into the water, what do you prefer? Yes. The temperature of the water is surrounding 16, 17 Celsius degrees. And we receive the breeze uh, of this uh, uh, fantastic uh, area. Um, so, in terms of climatic condition, uh, Limari region, uh, in terms of temperature, uh, we get very moderate temperature, but also I think it's very important the sunlight. Because when you are in cool climate region but, but very sunny, normally the intensity of the flavors are higher. In this area, we have the Kamanchaka, and the Kamanchaka is that every single morning is cloudy every single morning. So, 50% of the day, cloudy, no fog. Let, it's a let very add, tall... Let, uh, let uh, me add a line about that, because in the Santa Rita Hills this morning seminar, all the wines were in Venice, I mean, in, in, in a great sunlight exposure, if you realize that. I don't know if you taste the wines, but... So I go, I'm a very nerdy person. So I went to the Atlas, solar Atlas in the world, and I measure the exposure of sunlight in each place. And believe me, it's as half in Limari than they have in Santa Rita Hills. So that's a, an interesting component for yeah. the place. Yeah, be, and, and for me, that is very important because if you want to go for, uh, for the dryness, the freshness, no opulent fruit character, you need to be in cool climate, but also in areas where are not very sunny. And this area, 50% of the day is cloudy and the evening is, is, is you, you see the blue sky. So that blue sky that is in the evening, plus the um, cool temperatures, it's, it produces sun and energy enough to the vines to ripe the fruit, but, don't, but not burn the freshness, the acidity. So when people ask me to describe this area, it's like, I don't know if you, someday you was in Phoenix, Arizona, Yes, full of cactus, desert. That is the landscape of this area, but with air condition and with cloudiness. So it's a 
fantastic place. It's a very particularly place where when you are there, you don't understand because you are in a desert with cactus, dry, cool, cloud, so you don't know where you are. And then we are very lucky, and, and, uh, and here is the link with the Andes Mountain. All this area was under the uh, Pacific Ocean million years ago. So we have primary calcium carbonato in the Andes Mountain, 3,000 meters over the sea level, from the Jurassic and the Cretacic. And that material over the years go down and deposit in the soils. So in this area, in Quebrada Seca, we have a red clay, like the Roland Garros tennis court, yeah. uh, which is with a, um, it took that color by the uh, iron oxidized, so it's a red clay, but over limestone. So that give a really nice uh, opportunities for Chardonnay and Pinot. You get the structure from the clay, and you get, and you get the minerality, the freshness, the persistence from the uh, calcium carbonate, or we call it local limestone, because it's not a, a limestone as you know in San Emilion or, or in other areas. It's deposits. It's deposit. It's mixed with the uh, soil. Okay. So this, this wine we produce a Chardonnay and we produce also a Pinot Noir. And both wines are, we get, a, I think, a very nice precision of fruit. Um, when you smell, when you taste, those wines are very elegant, very persistent, very salty. One glass invite you to the next glass. So, and it's in the left side of the end, yeah? <laughs> yes, right. Just in front of the Pacific no, Ocean. I'm just joking. Have so, you tasted the wine? Did you like it? Yeah. It's yeah. fine, it's fine, yeah. So, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hmm? Thank you, Marcelo.